I can tell you that a number of weapons were secured as well, a subject uh, or incident to arrest. I won't get into what those weapons were, but we did, uh, we did secure a number of weapons in, in regards to these individuals. Welcome back to the Mount Man Medical YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out. Before we get into this video, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit that like and subscribe button. That's a free way to support me here at the channel. This story is coming to us from Toronto, Canada. It happened on December 18th, just this last Sunday. Let's talk about it next. When emergency medical services staff uh, commenced medical intervention, they realized that the victim had suffered what were, what were described as stab wounds. Uh, as a result of that, that individual was transported to a nearby hospital and unfortunately succumbed to his injuries. So I think there are some things that we can learn from this, especially as a first responder. If you are rolling up onto a scene and you don't know what's happened, there's just somebody laying on the ground and they're bleeding very badly, you're not really sure what's going on. This could be a very dangerous situation for you. So if you are trying to help this person, you should, and that's very admirable, but you also need to be thinking about your own safety. Where are those threats? How did this person get hurt? And can you get hurt that same way? Very important that your safety is the first priority. Another thing that we need to be thinking about here is the location of these stab wounds. Now, if the stab wounds are on the arms and legs, there might be multiple stab wounds there. Which ones do you treat first? That's easy. If there are multiple stab wounds on an arm or a leg, we're just going to tie on a tourniquet and it's going to shut off the blood supply to the entire arm or leg. Next, we need to be looking at the junctions. We need to be looking for wounds to pack, especially with stab wounds. Those are particularly the most dangerous. Slashes don't do that much damage. It's the punctures that we really need to be worried about because you can be hitting internal organs. The only way that you can fix a stab wound in a junctional area is with wound packing. This is not a place where a tourniquet is gonna work. A junction is any place where two body parts come together like your neck meets your torso, your armpits, and then in your groin. These are bad places to be stabbed because they're very difficult to take care of if you don't understand how to wound pack properly. So what's very interesting about this situation is how young these suspects are. They are young teenage girls, some of them as young as 13 years old, all the way up to 16 years old. All eight of them have been caught and taken in and charged with second degree murder. They met each other through social media. They come from varying parts of the city. That is to say they are not from one specific geographic location, but I wouldn't describe them as a gang at this point. It would be consistent with what we traditionally call a swarming or a swarming type behavior. Now, I tried to look up some stuff on this swarming behavior and I wasn't able to find anything in really relation with humans. Uh, some things about AI swarming and animal swarming and that kind of thing. So I don't really understand his use of the term swarming here, but I'm guessing that, that he's hesitant to call them a gang necessarily, and that uh, they just attacked and everybody just kind of pitched in and uh, went, with the, uh, went with the group, so to speak. The 59-year-old victim, I wouldn't necessarily call him homeless, maybe just recently on, on some hard luck. Pretty rough story, I'm sad to hear all of that, uh, but I think there's some things that we can learn from this. Uh, from stabbing wounds, we need to be thinking about a couple of different things. One of those things is, is that we can't really trust the casualty to tell us where their stab wounds are. If you run up to talk to that casualty and you say, where are you hurt? And they say here, we need to believe them and make sure that we're checking where they are injured, but we also need to be checking their entire body. We need to do a full sweep from head to toe and treat as we go. We don't know how many wounds they have and where those wounds are, and neither will a casualty. It's not that uncommon for a casualty who has been stabbed multiple times to not know exactly where they've been stabbed. For that casualty, if they are fighting when the lights go out, and then you start to work on that person and you start to save their life and keep blood in their body, you might revive them. They might come back and when their lights come back on, they might go right back to fighting. They might not realize that you are somebody that is trying to help them. So we need to make sure that they aren't going to be coming after us. That's not that uncommon. I've had to hold people down on numerous occasions only because they didn't know what was going on. That's all I got for you. Thanks for hanging out and checking out this video. Remember, your safety is the number one priority. Head over to mountainmanmedical.com and check out our Yellowstone and Wind River trauma kits. 
be ready for whatever the mountain throws at you. I'll catch you guys in the next one.